on behalf of department of english baba gulam shah badsha university and government arts and commerce college netrang behruj gujarat i welcome all the participants and dignitaries to the uh, valedictory session of 3 day international e conference on revisiting william shakespeare we are joined by honorable vice chancellor baba gulam shah badsha university professor javed sarath an honor to have him in this session uh, all the programs or endeavors that we take are think of taking at baba gulam shah badsha university it is all because of the support uh, and encouragement of honorable <laughs> chancellor professor javed musarraf we are joined by professor iqbal praveez dean academic affairs baba gulam shah badsha university rajouri he is another reason why the faculty in baba gulam shah badsha university has been so engaging in these dire times among covid 19 pandemic we are joined by atanu bhatacharya he is dean a uh, school of language literature and culture studies central university gujarat gandhinagar we are thankful to you for joining us in the session we are joined by uh, dr ganpat bai r parmar he is a uh, government arts and commerce college behruj gujarat They, we are collaborating with them in organizing this event we are also joined by dr jaswant rathor head department of english uh, government arts and commerce college uh, behruj gujarat and dr amit kapoor sir and many other dignitaries who have joined us if i skip someone's name apologies in advance now without take much time i would like to go straight over <laughs> professor praveez dean academic affairs baba gulam shah badsha university for welcome address professor iqbal praveez uh professor iqbal praveez if <laughs> if you hear me please unmute and uh, present a welcome address Unfortunately, we have lost the contact with uh, with uh, Professor Iqbal. Pick a face. सब तो ऊपर जो मैंने जैसे ही सेमिनार करे हैं ये क्या करते हैं इन्हें ये ज़्यादा आए तो अच्छा लगता है. Professor Iqbal Pravez, 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 Professor Iqbal Uh, referring to uh, professor iqbal praveez dean academic affairs baba gulam shah badsha university yes but uh, i due to some issues either i am not audible to iqbal praveez
Why not? No. What? Am I missing out something or what? Uh, maybe, sir, uh, mic would not be functional. We are having some audio issues with the uh, Dean Academic Affairs, sir. Uh, inconvenience is regretted. We will try to sort out, sort it out in a minute. But Tanvir sir, he was uh, audible right now. Ah, he was audible. Tanvir, there is some technical issue. I'll try to uh, contact him. I think you give him a buzz, in fact, and find out what's the reason. Uh, sir, I have already done that, but unfortunately, he's not picking up my phone. Uh, he must be busy somewhere. I'll uh, talk to him. Ma'am, I have talked okay. to Professor, he would Pardon? be. I have talked to Dean Academic Professor. He would be there in a minute. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, it's okay. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, Dean Academic Affairs sir, has joined us back and I hope So, if you are able to uh, hear me, Hello. Yes, ma'am. Tanvir, Dean Academic Affairs is already in, but uh, you are not able to hear him. There is some problem with the voice. Kindly check it. Uh, we have problem at the end of uh, Dean Academic Affairs, sir. But he's... Is he audible to others or only not audible to me? I just talked to him. He's not audible to others. Yeah. He's there. Uh, no, but madam, I could hear him when he prompted in between. I could hear him. Okay, fine, sir. Can you kindly check it? What's the reason? It is audible, sir. Can we, sir? Lava. Yes, sir. Ab bolen, sir. Ab unmute karke. Am I audible now? Yes, yes sir. sir. You are. You are. Thankfully. What happened? Yes, sir. You are. You are. Well, anyway, uh, turn off your phone. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, let me extend my apologies. So, keep you waiting. There was some technical uh, hassle somewhere. But, uh, mercifully, that has got resolved. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome you all to this validity function of uh, the three-day international conference on revisiting William Shakespeare, which was organized jointly by the Department of English, Baba Ghulam Shah Bashar University, the jury, in collaboration with the Government Arts and Co Commerce College, Etang Baruch, Gujarat. So it was a joint venture. But the leading light was the head of the Department of English, Dr. Romina Rashid, who was the source of inspiration. And her dreams were realized into action by her uh, young colleagues and comrades. And the notable among them is Mr. Tanvir Ahmad and his dedicated team of the colleagues. Uh, the, all of you know that organization of any conference is always a very Herculean task. But if it is on the E mode, that the life becomes somewhat easier. Even after that, the, the fact remains that there is still a tremendous amount of load of paperwork and also the communication protocols which are required to keep everyone. So to that extent, I think I must compliment Mr. Tanvir and his team that despite having a very short notice, they were able to get such an overwhelming response. And uh, this is got by the fact that the response was from all four corners of the country, be it from South India, North India, East India, or the West India. And when I looked at the number of participants from the different universities, you name any university what is named, and they had their participation there. That is, speaks greatly about the success of this, success of this three-day wonderful international conference. Uh, I had the you know, privilege of attending the inaugural session of the conference, where I had the good fortune of listening to the keynote speaker, Professor Paul Budra from Simon Fraser University, Canada, who spoke about revisiting William Shakespeare in an age of conspiracy. Uh, the talk was extremely enlightening for a language lover like me, who otherwise an outsider, and who came to know that conspiracies, conspiracies which are prevalent now were prevalent even at the time of Shakespeare. So they are the, the conspiracies, therefore, are the ones which are ageless, and it is a continuous phenomena which runs all through. <laughs> I'm so glad to learn that the response of this conference uh, has been so good that the organizers had tough time to find the slot for the speakers. And this really you know, speaks greatly about the good amount of homework which Tanvir and his team has done to make this conference a great success. The sessions were chaired by the eminent speakers and the discussions, I was told, remained lively and informative. Uh, the more details about uh, the you know, participations and then the themes covered and the people who chaired will be covered by Dr. Romina Rashid. So in order to you know, avoid any kind of repetition, I'm leaving this job to her to do that. In the end, I can't, uh, you know, help making an observation. While e-conference makes things very easy, cost-effective, and less time-consuming, but it takes away the charm of the personal face-to-face -face meeting. There is a certain degree of romance when you have conference face-to-face, -face, when you come to know people, when you meet them, when, when you exchange your thoughts, when you exchange ideas, when you exchange emails, when you exchange your phone numbers, and then at times you end up making good friends there. So that kind of a you know a romance is miss, missing in these kind of e-conferences. But I can uh, I can assure the audience that as soon as the situation becomes normal, we are in uh, Baba Ghulam Shah Basha University. Uh, going to organize a face-to-face -face conference so that you are able to see this paradise on earth. Let me tell you that BGSBU, which happens to be located on the green and uh, serene patch of nature, is a wonderful place to come and uh, be here. I'm sure this is an ideal place for the academic pursuits. So I extend invitation to all of you that as and when we send you an invitation to have a conference in BGSBU. Never ever this opportunity. It is going to be a good lifetime opportunity for you. So with these few words, uh, I will hand it over back to Tanvir for further proceedings. 
thank you. We were listening to the welcome address by Professor Iqbal Praveez, Dean <laughs> at Shahbaz Shah University. I would like to go over to Dr. Rumina Rashid, Head Department of English, Baba Ghulam Shahbaz Shah University, to present the report on conference. Dr. Rashid. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes. ma'am, you are. Okay. Honorable Vice Chancellor of Baba Ghulam Shahbaz Shah University, Professor Javed Musarat Sahab. Dean Academic Affairs, Professor Iqbal Parvez. Dean School of Islamic Studies and Languages, Professor G.M. Malik. Registrar, Dr. Ashfaq Zari. Dr. Jiyad Parmar, Principal, Government, Arts and Commerce College, Natrang, Baruch, Gujarat. Our guest of eminence today, Professor Atanu Bhattacharya, Dean School of Languages, Literature and Cultural Studies, Central University of Gujarat. Our eminent chairpersons who chaired the five sessions of uh, our uh, international conference, uh, various people from academic world, research scholars, and my dear friends, good evening to all. I welcome you all to the validatory function of the three-day international e-conference on revisiting Shakespeare, which was conducted in collaboration with the Government Arts and Commerce College, Natrang Baruch, Gujarat. <clears throat> now, why did we choose this topic for our conference? The reason behind was that Shakespeare is the binding force between all the lovers of literature. Ben Johnson has rightly anticipated that Shakespeare's dazzling future when he declared it was not of an age, but for all times. Shakespeare's ability to summarize the range of human emotions in simple yet profoundly eloquent verse is perhaps the greatest reason for his enduring popularity. His stories transit time and culture. Modern storytellers have continued to adapt Shakespeare's stories to suit modern works. His greatest tragic characters are unparalleled in literature, and he has dwarfed the sublime creations of great Greek tragedians. He not only epitomizes Renaissance humanism, but has contributed to philosophic push of humanism in art and culture. There is abundance of scholarship available on Shakespeare. He is, in fact, re-researched, like it is said that dismantling the building, erecting a new structure on it from the debris, and giving it a new look. Uh, this is e-conference was organized, as Sir has already said, that it was organized on very short notice, and it took us around 15 days to get the things done. But it would not have been possible had we not been supported and encouraged by our honorable vice chancellor. He's like a beacon light, always showing us the right path. He's always keen to promote such kind of academic activities in the university. I would like to make a special mention of our Dean Academic Affairs Professor Iqbal Parvez, who is a guiding force, very supportive, very helpful. Thank you, sir, for all the help that you have rendered to us during this conference. This conference was conducted through virtual mode on Zoom and was live streamed on YouTube channel, Your Academy. We received an overwhelming response from participants across India and abroad. Around 300 participants registered themselves for this conference. The plenary session was held on 20th of June, 2020 at 7.30 p.m., wherein Professor Iqbal Parvez, Dean Academic Affairs, presented a formal welcome address. And the keynote speaker was Professor Paul Budra from Department of English, Simon Fraser University, Canada. He is also the director of SFU Publications. He delivered his keynote address on topic revisiting Shakespeare in age of conspiracy. He discussed about conspiracy theories of critics against Shakespeare. He focused on the unwarranted theories or bizarre theories, which had no groundings to prove their points. Professor Budra, in his address, referred to the conspiracies which questioned Shakespeare's works, his genius. Regarding Shakespeare, there are numerous theories which question the legitimacy of Shakespeare as an author. Professor Budra debunked each theory and he threw light on how Shakespeare was received by writers, critics, politicians in all ages. He even remarked that 
great Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi once claimed that Shakespeare was an Arab. Honorable Vice Chancellor Professor Javed Musarraf, in his presidential address, appreciated the efforts of Department of English Baba Ghulam Shabazzi University and Government Arts and Commerce College, Natrang Baruch, for organizing this event. Professor Jia Malik presented the former vote of thanks. On 21st of June and 22nd of June, five technical sessions were conducted. The first session was chaired by Professor Rajesh Karan Kal, Head Department of English, University of Mumbai. 14 research papers were presented in this session. The papers were presented on different topics ranging from management to feminism. In the second session, it was uh, chaired by Professor Jagdish Joshi, Director of UGC Human Resource Development Center, Gujarat University, Ahmedabad. Again, 14 research papers from different perspectives were analyzed in this session. In the third uh, technical session, it was chaired by Professor Hitesh Rabia, head department of English, the Maharaja Siyaji Rao University of Baroda. We again had 13 different papers from different perspectives. They were analyzed, the question answers were asked. Then on the second day, Professor, the first session, second day, that is 22nd of June, the first session was chaired by Professor Paresh Joshi from Veer Narmad South Gujarat University and 14 papers were presented, again, from different perspectives and from the perspectives uh, pertaining to the present contemporary time. The last session was uh, chaired by Professor Muhammad Asim Siddiqui from Aligarh Muslim University. 14 papers were presented. We had, uh, in all, 75 participants who presented research papers in five technical sessions. Paper were presented on various themes ranging uh, from management, post colonialism, feminism, adaptations, pandemic, quarantine, psychoanalytic, analytic criticism, ERT, and uh, Marxism. The papers provided a critical insight into the works of Shakespeare, and they, the paper presenters tried to connect Shakespeare's themes to the present prevailing scenarios. This conference connected us to the people of different cultures, faiths, nationalities, regions, and opened new vistas of discussions. New knowledge was created by using the existing one in a very creative way, and new concepts were generated. That was the main reason of our conference, and alhamdulillah, we have been able to fulfill it. Thank you very much. Uh, Over to Tanvir. Thank you, Dr. Romina Rashid. We uh, were listening to the report being presented by Dr. Romina Rashid, Head Department of English, Baba Ghulam Shabadja University. Now, uh, I'd like to go over to the uh, guest of eminence, Professor uh, Atanu Bhattacharya, Dean School of Language, Literature and Culture, Cultural Studies, Central University, Gujarat, Gandhinagar, to share his views briefly. Over to Professor Atanu Bhattacharya. Uh, thank you very much, Tanvir. Am I audible? Uh, yes, you yeah. are. All right. Okay, so Honorable uh, Vice Chancellor, Honorable Deans, Registrar of uh, Baba Ghulam Shah Bacha University um, and the Government Arts College, uh, Baruch, for having me here because yeah, both the institutions are kind of collaborated and uh, uh, it's good to see in this uh, moments of pandemic and these moments where um, uh, we generally tend to live in our own bubbles when we have face-to-face, -face, as Dr. Rashid uh, clearly pointed out uh, in her address, that what has happened is that uh, these moments which are supposed to be uh, uh, kind of making us lonely or where we are not supposed to socialize, where uh, there are departments of English and departments of humanities which are basis of socializations, uh, where a pandemic comes and then we are told not to socialize, it is good that this e-platforms are allowing us to collaborate across uh, different regions, uh, across different uh, boundaries, uh, which probably does not happen uh, in a face-to-face -face situation in, in, in such a great fashion. So thank you for having me over here. Uh, what I... Uh, the interesting thing that uh, one, one, once we look at Shakespeare, especially the theme of uh, the conference uh, that I looked at, is that uh, remember Shakespeare's time was also the age of collaboration. So there was a huge amount of collaboration that was happening uh, 
across writers, across uh, actors. Uh, and if you look at the entire period in which Shakespeare was writing, uh, it was uh, an age of uh, collaborative writing, uh, which probably later with the rise of individualism and individual writing skills, what we have is uh, we have a movement away from that collaborative effort, from that joint writing mode. Uh, and therefore, uh, later uh, scholars of Shakespeare found it so difficult to put Shakespeare together because we didn't really know which parts were written by Shakespeare, which parts were not written by Shakespeare. Uh, and to have a definitive Shakespeare, therefore, took more than 100 years after his death. Uh, so what we have uh, in, uh, when we look at Shakespeare today, therefore, uh, I think it's it will be interesting to see the different modes of understanding him. So what I'm going to do today, maybe in the next 10, 15 minutes, uh, I'm going to look at those modes that as, as teachers, as research scholars, as uh, people who are interested in the discipline, uh, when we look at Shakespeare, what are the different modes through which we can look at him? And I'm going to concentrate uh, basically on uh, Shakespeare uh, not as the great bard or Shakespeare as a Western writer, but our Shakespeare. So Shakespeare, which came to India. And remember, Shakespeare has a long history in India. It's not simply that uh, Shakespeare belongs to, uh, to Britain or to Europe or to uh, just uh, the Western world, but uh, with colonialism, with the coming of the East India Company and later, of course, the British crown, uh, Shakespeare very much belongs to us as well. And we uh, encountered him, we, uh, we negotiated uh, the different ways Shakespeare can be interpreted. We looked at different ways that Shakespeare can be staged. The theatrical productions of Shakespeare had its own flavor when they were produced in India. And therefore, when we look at Shakespeare, probably it's good to claim that Shakespeare is as much ours as it belongs to the Western world. So I'm going to look at our Shakespeare a bit, and I'm going to look at the nodes through which we can look at our Shakespeare, how Shakespeare entered India, and what are the different nodes of that entry, how do we uh, negotiate those entries, and how do we look at Shakespeare from those different nodes. Now, we know that Shakespeare came, uh, the first node, of course, that we are all taught in departments of English is that Shakespeare came with formal educational system. And we have been told that it is, of course, uh, Macaulay has been much maligned, but it was with Macaulay's 1834 uh, minute that it, we know that English education in a certain institutionalized form came into existence. And later, of course, 20 years down the line, we have the establishment of the universities. And with the establishment of the universities, we have a formal education system that kind of institutionalizes Shakespeare. But if we also go back to the history of uh, what happens with these, uh, what we know by uh, Shakespeare, uh, what we understand by Shakespeare today, uh, especially in India, we are also aware of the fact that uh, Shakespeare had a longer history. Uh, so if you look at the East India Company and how it starts establishing itself after 1757, especially in the province of Bengal, we also know that once uh, the province of Bengal is handed over to the East India Company by uh, by Shah Alam, the emperor of uh, the Mughal emperor of India at that point of time, which was known as the handing over of the Diwani. So the Diwani of Bengal is given to the East India Company. And by 1765, the East India Company becomes an important player in the eastern part of the country, especially in the provinces of Bengal, Bihar, and Orissa. We also know that there is also a cultural appropriation that starts happening. So we know that there are institutions that start coming up, like the Asiatic Society in 1774, we know that because of the uh, presence of the white officers in Fort William, and of course, with the new development of the city of Calcutta, you needed a certain kind of a cultural uh, entertainment, a certain kind of a culture to continue. And Shakespeare came in in that culture. You'll be surprised to know that a large number of Shakespearean plays were actually performed way back in 1760s and 1770s in the newly developing city of Calcutta where new theaters were built, uh, especially the theaters like Star Theater, which burns down, then it was rebuilt. And many of these players, uh, many of these actors who came to perform Shakespeare were actually not uh, local actors who, uh, who uh, did Shakespeare. 
primarily because we still didn't have access to English. So many of these player companies were actually uh, brought in from England uh, after traveling for six to eight months. And these companies would stay in Calcutta or in Madras or in Bombay for two to three months, perform the Shakespearean plays, and then move on to other imperial domains like in Hong Kong later uh, to Singapore, etc. And then they will go back to England. So you have a history of traveling Shakespeare in the imperial lands. And that is an interesting note to look at. So Shakespeare, when we first encounter Shakespeare in India or in the imperial domains, it is not actually through education. It is through these traveling companies which come to India, perform primarily for educated elites, uh, but also mostly for white officers of the East India Company and later, of course, the British uh, crown after 1857. And what you have is these traveling companies who perform Shakespeare uh, to contextualize those performances in the local conditions. So obviously, they could not perform as they used to perform in the Globe Theatre in England. So they had to perform according to what they could do in these makeshift theatres in Calcutta. So that is the first note that we can look at as research scholars and researchers. And I'm sure that I was looking at some of the uh, papers that were presented during the conference and they were fascinating ones. So people have looked at, for example, the post-colonial Shakespeare. People have looked at the adaptations of Shakespeare. Uh, probably less amount of research has happened in these early traveling Shakespeare's that came to India uh, with the East India Company. But of course we know that when uh, English became a medium of instruction and got institutionalized in the universities, especially in Calcutta, Bombay, and Madras, and later in Allahabad and Punjab in 1882. Around this period, there are huge amounts of Shakespeare's that start getting translated and adapted. And that is the second mode um, that we can look at again. So it was not only Shakespeare being performed in English. So Shakespeare was now being performed, especially after the 1830s and the 1840s, when English becomes a medium of instruction, more and more people start getting educated in the language. And there is a certain class of people in Bengal, they are called the Bhadralok, the educated genteel ones. So this new class of people who have access to English now, but also, of course, access to a certain kind of colonial power. Uh, produce a certain kind of Shakespeare through translation and adaptation. Now, uh, we, uh, since this uh, conference is in uh, collaboration with a college in Gujarat, one of the interesting things that happens in this region, for example, is translation and adaptation of Shakespeare by Parsi theater. So a large number of Parsis who stay in this region produce and adapt Shakespeare uh, to or general masses. So what happens is Shakespeare, which is seen as an elite writer of English, slowly gets disseminated into the masses through these translations and adaptations. Uh, if you look at the history of these adaptations and translations, especially of the 1850s, that is the second node I think that we can look at. And there are extremely interesting regional variations of these translations and adaptations. Uh, I know a bit about Bengal, so I can say, for example, some of the greatest playwrights in Bengal in the 1870s and 1880s, uh, someone called Girish Chandra Ghosh, for example, uh, who produces, who almost gives birth to the modern Bengali theatre, heavily borrows from Shakespeare in terms of the style, in terms of the format of the plays, in terms of the themes of the plays, especially from the historical plays of Shakespeare. Etc. In fact, his first play, uh, Girish Ghosh's first play, is a play called uh, Sirajud Dollar, which heavily draws from Macbeth, uh, from Shakespeare. So, what you have is an interesting uh, give and take between regional languages and Shakespeare, between Shakespeare as an English uh, writer to Shakespeare as an Indian adapted writer. So, what we have is the second node that operates over here. And again, some amount of research needs to happen, especially in regional languages and what happens to Shakespeare at that point of time. Uh, the third note that I would just mention uh, is uh, what happens during the 1900s, 1920s, and 1930s, when Shakespeare, again, like in the early times in the 1770s and 80s, I said that uh, there were lots of uh, these Western player companies that traveled to India and uh, performed plays. 
by the 1920s and 30s, of course, we have Indian companies now that are traveling all across India, which are performing Shakespeare. The most famous of them is a company called Shakespeareana, uh, which is founded by someone called Jeffrey Kendall. Uh, Jeffrey Kendall, incidentally, is the father of Shashi Kapoor's wife. Um, and Kendall and his company perform across India, uh, which uh, goes to the, all the kings of Travancore and Cochin and Patiala. And so across India, they go to these kingdoms where guest houses are reserved for them. And they perform Shakespeare either in English, most of them in English, but some of them also kind of translated uh, into local languages. So what you have is the traveling Shakespeare coming back in a different form. So you have the first note where Shakespeare traveled from England to India for the white men, mostly men because women were not supposed to look at uh, theater. Uh, the second point where due to in, uh, English translations or English available availability of English as a medium of instruction, you have Shakespeare productions in the 1830s and 40s. 40s. Uh, you have the third note where you have the adaptations and translations of Shakespeare. And then you come back again to the traveling Shakespeare through companies like Shakespeare. Yeah. And of course, you have the fifth node in post-independence India, where Shakespeare is adapted, translated uh, in different sorts of media, uh, the most important media being, of course, uh, films. So it was uh, quite uh, interesting to see that many of the papers were actually based on Vishal Bharadwaj trilogy, uh, the, the Omkara and Magdoub, and of course, Haider, the last one that he did. Uh, but even before that, if you look at the history of films in India, you have the production of Hamlet as early as 1954. So you have Hamlet, uh, which is produced in uh, Urdu. Uh, the complete Hamlet is, the entire film is available on YouTube. So people who are interested in films and film adaptations, it would be interesting to have a look at that. And the entire film is directed actually by an Uriya, uh, by a man from Orissa who uh, settles in uh, Bombay and produces Hamlet in uh, Urdu. The entire dialogue is translated in what is known as Hindustani, and uh, the uh, the play is performed in the form of a film. And if you look at the film, it's almost like a play. Uh, you have these uh, static cameras, which are uh, just simply looking as if you are looking at theatre. You are not looking at a film at all. So it's a very very interesting production in 1954. Uh, but you also have these adaptations where Shakespeare again travels. So you have films like uh, when Hamlet came to Mizora. Now, we don't know how Shakespeare traveled to the Northeast. So you have a film in 1988, I think it was produced, called When Hamlet Came to Mizora, and how Hamlet was kind of adapted into Mizoram theater, etc. So you have interesting, of course, you have Gulzar's uh, Angur, uh, an adaptation of Shakespeare, you of course have Vijal Bharadwaj, etc. So you have the fifth note. So again, going back, therefore Shakespeare or our Shakespeare or Indian Shakespeare uh, can therefore be researched from different points of view, from different angles, from 1770s of traveling of British companies to India to 1820s and 30s of performance of these plays in colleges and universities in English to 1850s and 60s of adaptations and translations of Shakespeare to 1920s and 30s of how they were, of course, performed uh, in English in many of the colleges, but how, again, Shakespeare started traveling through these traveling companies. But, of course, at the end, the modern post-colonial, uh, post-independent uh, uh, adaptations of Shakespeare today. So we have different points of Shakespeare that we can have a look at, uh, which I am sure that all the enthusiastic participants of this conference and of this um, three-day event, which I'm sure will leave you with an impression of Shakespeare uh, going back to your departments uh, and again looking at it afresh. And as, uh, as pointed out by Dr. Rashid uh, and by the dean in the initial stages, probably we'll meet again face-to-face -face in a more happy situation uh, and have a discussion face-to-face -face on these different nodes uh, with uh, probably over a cup of tea and a coffee. So thank you very much again for giving me the opportunity to speak uh, at this conference. And again, thank both the institutions for having me for this last session. So thank you very much.
Thank you, Professor Atanu Bhattacharya. So we were listening to a completely different perspective that we hadn't listened up to this time. We uh, were being enlightened about the Indian Shakespeare. So uh, the conference began with the conspiracies about Shakespeare from Canada by Paul Budra and they have very well been concluded by an Indian Shakespeare and we uh, were enlightened how he was imported to India by the white men, how he traveled here to different parts of India and how he was adapted and presented and uh, in front of the Indian audience. Now, I would like to go over to uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor Baba Gulam Shabadja University, Professor Javed Musarat uh, to deliver the presidential address. Professor Javed Musarat. Thank you, Tanvir. Thank you very much. I welcome all the audience here. And uh, I'm so pleased uh, to know that this three-day international conference on revisiting William Shakespeare has been largely attended and has gone very well. It is uh, really heartening to note that about 300 participants registered and more than 75 papers have been presented in the last two days. Now, this overwhelming response and large attendance clearly suggests that this conference has provided a great platform to all Shakespeare lovers to deeply explore the versatility of this uh, great writer and uh, the relevance of his work in a contemporary world. Well, he, he was not uh, only a writer but also an actor and an owner of a playing company. His work has not only influenced other novelists, but uh, also the painters and musicians. And I've read that there are around uh, 20,000 pieces of uh, music and about three opera linked to the Shakespeare work. And I had a privilege to attend the keynote address also of Paul Bodra from Simon Fraser University, Canada on Shakespeare and various conspiracy theories, which was very, very informative and fascinating. I do hope that uh, the rest of the sessions in the last two days on the identified key areas and the 11 sub themes were also very, very enriching for English literature enthusiasts. Well, the Oxfordian theory of uh, the Shakespeare authorship will continue into 21st century. But in my frank opinion, this conference is definitely a rich tribute to the world's greatest uh, dramatist and uh, his extraordinary work. So thanks to Romina, thanks to Tanvir, Dean School of uh, Languages, Professor G.M. Malik, uh, Dean Academic Affairs, Professor Iqbal Purvez for organizing such a useful and scholastic event and at the same time, I'm grateful to the co-organizers from Gujarat for all their support. Thanks to Professor Atanu Bhattacharya for enlightening us and uh, providing us a different perspective of Shakespeare's life. With this, I thank one and all. Stay safe and healthy. God bless you all. Uh, thank you, sir. We were listening to Professor Javed Musarat. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor Baba Gulam Shah Badja University. Uh, now I would like to go over to uh, Dr. Ganpat Bhai R. Pramar, Principal uh, Government Arts and Commerce College, Netrang Bahruj, uh, for a uh, vote of thanks. Dr. Ganpat Bhai R. Pramar. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Shakespeare truly said that pleasure and action make the hour seem short. Personally, I feel that it was an academic journey at Vaya Kashmir to Gujarat and all over the India. 
let me assure our academic journey is not over but will go on in future baba gulam sahab asa university rajouri jammu kashmir tanvi sir there is too much noise please go ahead go ahead you are audible. government arts and commerce college netrang and baba gulam sahab badsha university rajouri jammu kashmir have jointly organized the three days international e conference on revisiting william shakespeare at the outset let me state proudly that we are indians and we know how to get benefit from this lockdown and quarantine stage historically our sages and saints went in self quarantine modes to achieve the divine blessing when gandhi ji had the face such condition he wrote great literature and help us for independence sir we know that positive meaning of the quarantine stage we indian have no profit from the worst condition so the conference was a grand success because it connected participants from all over the india a prominent university jammu kashmir baba gulab sahab asa university and uh, our government arts and commerce college netrang jointly organized this particular event and uh, participants from, from all over india andhra pradesh kerala and other parts of india have take part and present their paper it is a great unity i sincerely thank professor paul budra simon fraser university canada for keynote address of our international conference sir you rightly uh, he rightly mentioned that shakespeare works have universal teaching he also uh, talk on the conspiracies in personal professional and political spheres of human life i sincerely thank to professor javed musrat honorable vice chancellor of baba gulam sahab badsha university rajouri jammu kashmir shakespeare stated that motivation have no boundaries sir your motivational speech boosted us in our academic venture i thank dr iqbal parvez dean academic affairs baba gulam sahab badsha university for his kind support i also thank professor g m malik for his academic help dr romina rashid has constantly contacted dr rathod and she has proved that she is an able academician with lot of professional skills as a head of department of english baba gulab sabad sa university rajouri she sincerely work as an able organizer of this conference she will certainly look forward for many professional projects in future i thank dr asfaq jari the registrar of baba gulam sabad sai university for this magnanimous support on this occasion i sincerely thank our chair person of technical session i thank professor rajesh karankal head department of english university of mumbai dr jagdish joshi the director of ugc human resources development center ahmedabad professor hitesh ravaiya head department of english maharaja sayaji rao university of baroda gujarat professor piyush joshi from vir narmad south gujarat university surat and professor asim siddiqui head department of english aligarh muslim university uttar pradesh for their curriculum academic help sir this chair person are well known for their academic brilliance i heartily thank to dr attanu bhattacharya dean school of language literature culture so, uh, studies from central university of gujarat gandhinagar for making this conference grant sir i will have say in, in depth to you i sincerely thank thank malia aslam for this constant help to make this conference how can i forget dr jaswant rathod the coordinator of this e conference of government arts and commerce college Guj netrang gujarat and mr tanwin ahmed the coordinator of baba gulam sabad sai university jammu kashmir both of them worked very hard to make this 
e conference in a grand success lastly i thank all participants from all over the india i thank the team of organizing committee both from government arts and commerce college netrang and baba gulam sahab asai university jammu kashmir to conclude with the enlightening quote of shakespeare it is not the star to hold our destiny but it in ourselves let's work hard and let let's make our academic efforts prosperous in future thank you very much jai hind thank you uh, dr ganpat bhai r pramad principal uh, government arts and commerce college netrang bahruj gujarat was presenting vote of thanks now uh, as coordinator of this valedictory session i extend my thanks to all the participants to the dignitaries who were part of this valedictory session and of the whole con 3 day international e conference on william shakespeare a uh, slight announcement uh, is that the certificates would be distributed to all the participants with registration number it would take at least 3 days time and you all will receive the certificates within 3 days time i would say at the end that these 3 days were literary fest and all the participants who were part of this 3 day international conference were content and jubilant and this is obvious through the messages that i have been receiving if i start reading them it may take another an hour to complete the valedictory so i would be thanking all the participants who were sending their congratulatory messages either on youtube or on our zoom app thank you one and all i would like to thank again honorable vice chancellor professor javed musarat for sparing his precious time with us professor atanu bhatacharya professor ibal pravesh dean academic affairs babcha university and my organizing team i'd like to mention them again at the end dr rumina department of athor head department of english government arts and commerce college netrang bahruj dr maria As assistant professor of english baba gulam shah bajaj university thank you all for being there and making this conference successful on this note i'd like to end this meeting for one and all thank you for being there